Greetings, loved ones. I wanted to vlog because this weekend I need somebody to talk to other than my beautiful baby and my lovely little dogs because this is going to be my first weekend home alone with baby since having her. Finley's on a bachelor trip. I just wanted to film this weekend and we can have, yeah, da, da's gone. We've been saying da, bless you. We've been saying da is her first word. My first word was dog, but apparently when her and Finley were alone, she looked at him and said, Da. So now we've been like, yeah, that's your da. <laughs> anyway, he left early this morning. And so I just got home a little while ago and she slept so wonderfully on the way to and from the Hartford airport. I'm also hoping that she will sleep so wonderfully on the way to pick him up on Sunday night because he can only get a late night flight back because the bachelor is going to be driving him to the airport and he has other things to do on like that Sunday, obviously it's his weekend. And Corvidia normally falls asleep, I would say around nine. And so she'll be asleep when I transfer her to the car seat and hopefully we'll just stay asleep, but we'll conquer that on Sunday night. And in the meantime, we're just gonna be hanging out. I have a loose to-do list of things I wanna do while I'm home with her. I don't know how many of those things I'll be able to get done, but she's pretty chill. So hopefully I can just baby wear her if I wanna clean or cook or do whatever like I normally do but I definitely just wanted to vlog as well because you know it's like a little bit scary until you do it for the first time like I was telling Finley last night when he was packing I'm just a little anxious you know like no matter how much I care for her it's like oh wow it's really just it's all me also just like double the chores and all that kind of stuff as well but luckily Finley and I both tackled some things before he left town like I meal prepped some breakfast stuff oh you have the hiccups she hates the hiccups <laughs> but yeah I meal prepped some stuff and then he did all of his chores before leaving as well as some of mine so I would have a little bit of a lesser load today and hopefully more into the week but yeah, I just wanted to start off this vlog. It's currently like 11 or 12, 11.30, and she is awake because she slept like the whole car ride. I nursed her in the back seat in the garage before we left. So then she finished, I transferred her to the car seat and then we drove down there because my lactation consultant calls this a nip and a nap. You know, she just needed a little nip and a little nap and she's rejuvenated and ready to take on the day. She's staring at the camera like, what the fuck is that? And she barely even woke up when Finley was saying bye to her at the airport. She was like, eh, hello, what's going on? So he was like, I don't wanna wake her too much because then she'll just be awake for the drive home. So she'll just reunite with him, I guess more consciously on Monday morning because Sunday night when he gets home, she'll hopefully just still be sleeping. Anyway, I need to have like a late breakfast here soon. I had some egg cups and coffee early this morning, but I need like, yogurt and granola or something. And we'll probably just be chilling in this bedroom for the most part, but I also want to do some stuff maybe with friends this weekend too, just to have more opportunities to get out of the house. Okay, love ya. Five hours later. Hello folks. Nothing that crazy has happened, honestly, since the last time we spoke about five hours ago. Uh, we're going on our third feeding right now. So that's pretty much what we've been doing. I don't know why she just made that noise. And we have been kind of just like cleaning up the kitchen and enjoying the front porch. The weather has been immaculate recently. It's been in like the 60s and 70s every single day for the past like four or five days. And it's been raining a lot. So that's why it is the cooler temperatures. I honestly feel like it's just a fake fall right now. And then we're gonna get back to hot, hot, hot weather. So I'm enjoying it while it lasts. And I just wanted to update you. I made a smoothie and I'm just having that bad boy and feeding her. And also I invited my friends to go to food truck roundup. I always call it farm truck roundup, but I believe it's actually food truck roundup. But it happens at the retreat farm in Brattleboro every Thursday from 5 to 8 p.m. in the summertime. So you can go for live music and it's very family friendly and super cute and just awesome and there's food trucks everywhere and you know you can get ice cream and drinks and whatever you want so we're gonna go to that in like we'll have to leave in an hour hey girl hey this is my outfit of the day i'm wearing just really comfy pants from parade these 
red ones. They're like a red waffle pant. I'm wearing my little tan slides from the sack. I'm wearing mushroom socks from some random store in Virginia. And then this is from the brand Motif, but I thrifted it forever ago. And I'm also wearing a purple long sleeve underneath it because this is really itchy and the purple matched the purple here. I have my Chanterelle earrings on and a little yellow bandana. This is my favorite bandana because it's the most broken in. It's the least stiff. Poor video is very cute in her Absorba overalls today. I thought they had strawberries on them, but it's just floral. So we're matching in our floral today. Okay, I'm gonna bring your little lovey. Let's go. I'm about to head home now. Corvidia actually fell asleep when they were playing Play That Funky Music White Boy. <laughs> it was like a cover band. Most of them are cover bands actually that come and play, but they're all great. And it was great to hang with friends, get out of the house, and also I got some delicious Jamaican food, some butter bean stew. Also, the Farm Truck Roundup, it's like $5 when you pay online. They do it every Thursday from five to eight in the summertime. And normally we give her a bath at eight, but because she fell asleep, I stayed a little later. I was getting crazy. Girls weekend, we're getting wild. Wild. She actually might be waking up, so I do need to head home, <laughs> but it was really fun and I'm glad that I went. We freaking love it here. It's always so fun. Highly recommend, even if you're just visiting Brattleboro for like the weekend or something like that and you happen to be in town for a Thursday, definitely go. Okay, we're gonna listen to Sierra Farrell and head home. Okay, Corvidia is currently getting a bath, so sorry for the weird lighting. I always turn off the like bigger overhead light when she gets a bath, but then we keep on the light over the sink. So it's like a little bit moodier. Anyway, I'm giving her a good old scrubbing because people, whenever I go out into public, not every time, but a lot of the time, they'll like touch her in her stroller. And I'm wondering if you guys have kids, if this happens to you? Because like when I was getting my ticket for um, going in, I didn't pay online, I paid at the door or whatever. And the guy who was giving me my ticket, like, you know, noticed her, reached into the stroller and grabbed her hand. And that's not the first time that that's happened. And then I saw a mom from my parent group and I went over and said hi to her. And I met her partner for the first time and shook his hand. And after I shook his hand, he reached out and grabbed Corvidia's hand. And I'm just like, I never know what to do, you know what I mean? I'm not confrontational, so I don't feel comfortable being like, um, don't touch her, you know what I mean? But I just think it's a little weird. But then again, I'm wondering like, am I just being sensitive, I guess? But I wouldn't touch someone else's baby unless they told me to touch them, you know what I mean? Unless they were like, do you wanna hold her? Or like, oh, she wants to hold your hand or something like that. I wouldn't, you know, take it upon myself to do that. Anyway. Let me know your thoughts down below on this because I'm curious. But we're gonna finish bath time and then we're gonna go upstairs do baby massage and then get her in her little PJs and then I'll nurse her to sleep and then try to very quickly and quietly transfer her so she doesn't wake up. Early the next morning. Good morning, folks. I'm having some coffee in bed and listening to the beautiful cacophony of Corvidia talking to herself in her bassinet. I went downstairs and I don't even heat up my egg cups anymore. I just use them as a vessel to get coffee into my body sooner. So I just grabbed one from the fridge, had that, made coffee, brought it up here. And I tried sideline nursing her to sleep because we had a bad night of slumber, but she's not interested. She's interested in happy baby wake window, window, window. In the mornings, she just wakes up and stares at the like fall hazard warning in her bassinet and talks to herself like this. It's currently 8.45, but we have been up since seven. <laughs> and I was trying to, yeah, get her to go back to sleep because I did a dream feed for her at like midnight and I thought that would make her sleep for longer. It did not. She woke up again at two and then she woke up again at four and then she woke up again at five and seven. She couldn't sleep because she was dreaming of Da. Anyway, me and the second mom on duty, Rue, are awake while Larry sleeps in. 
You're so good at your job, Rue. Providia loves this album because I listened to it before she was born and while she was being born. Well, I'm saying goodbye to the people that I feel are real good and wasting my time. What are we wearing today? Providia turns three months old today. I completely forgot. Happy three month birthday. Let's wear three month old clothes. It's gonna be 80 today, so we're gonna wear this little B onesie from Quincy May. You want your music back on? Quincy. Look at her. Send a picture to May May. You gonna poop in that? Thinking about it. Such a cute little outfit today. We love it. We ended up going back to sleep for a nap from like nine to 11 or something like that. So I'm having my granola now and we're hanging out on the porch with the doggies. I don't know what our plans are for today. I need to get a vlog up on my main channel. So I think I might just work on that after I eat. We're taking a little stroll around the yard, me and the dogs. Is Rue coming? And we're gonna go down and visit the piggies' graves. We gotta mow this lawn, brother. That ain't my chore. So I'll wait for my man to get back into town. I put a trail camera down by where the pig's grave is to see if they have any visitors. So I'm gonna check the trail cam is that my little Beecher? She's coming. But really all I've been doing today is just working on some final edits on a main channel video to get up. And that's kind of processing right now. And then we will see as the day goes on. Oh my God, somebody ate these flowers, it looks like. Look at these petals. These were the flowers that we put on Ducky's grave. It looks like some animal ripped the sunflowers apart and left the petals, which is not shocking. The pigs would have done the same, but this is where their grave overlooks into the woods. So lovely. You can see further out when it's not summer and the trees aren't as filled in, but it's a nice little spot. And this is Peachy's little spot here, which is so crazy to see because it's been so many months that there's like some plants that have grown in, you know? Okay, let's check this trail cam. Okay, no visitors on the trail cam. So I just hung out with them for a little bit, just paying my respects to my ladies. Oh. And I'm gonna head back up to the house and feed her because she's getting a little antsy. Okay, hi guys. I don't know if this vlog has been boring so far. I'm using my wool detergent right now, but I am currently washing my wool nursing pads. And I also have to do some other laundry after this because Finley did all of the laundry before he left, but I feel like I'm always doing laundry. Like, even if he did it, I still have so much to do. And if you have a baby, you know. It's just like kind of never ending. They spit up all over their clothes. They have blowouts. You know, you get food on your own clothes. You get spit up on your clothes. And I also want to switch her bassinet sheets. Anyway, after this, I'm going to go put a load in downstairs in the basement. And also today I realized, I was like, I've been wearing headbands so much. I don't think I've really like realized, but I think I'm having postpartum hair loss because I feel like my hairline never really went back this far. So now I'm like, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> new insecurity unlocked, even though I knew that this could happen. Also, wait, did I already say this, that today I'm officially out of my fourth trimester? Kind of insane, like, if you really think about it. She's three months old. Anyway, um, that's what I'm up to. I won't be able to wear my wool nursing pads tonight because I'm washing them and they won't be dry in time, which is unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. You gotta clean them when you gotta clean them. During the day, I wear LV catch cups in my bra for the most part, especially during like morning letdown and stuff. But then when I go to bed at night, I don't wanna wear freaking hard plastic cups in my bra. I mean, they're actually silicone on one side. They're really not like that hard, but they're definitely not comfy to sleep in. So I wear these instead. And they're from Green Mountain Diaper Company, which is actually a Brattleboro based company, which is so weird to me because they're like a very popular brand and I just feel like not that many things happen in Brattleboro. And they make wool diapers as well as like wool nursing pads and some other random stuff. So I have a pair of those. I'll link them down below if you're in the market for something like that. They're also antimicrobial because it helps protect against like mastitis and stuff, which I also, I never talked about this, but like this is kind of a, just a motherhood focused video, I feel like in general, but but I got my first clogged duct like right before I got sick. And honestly, I thought that I was sick as a result of having a clogged duct because sometimes you can get sick because of mastitis, but it was just clogged for like a day. And 
and I ordered sunflower lecithin which I've been taking every day now for just like maintenance but when I did have the clogged duct I think I was taking it like four times a day whatever it says on the bottle but that was really no fun at all a little part of my boob next to the nipple was just like inflamed and so uncomfortable and kind of felt like a bruise but it also felt hot it was so weird so that's checked off of my mommy to-do list not my to-do list but my mommy accomplishments that I've accomplished getting through my first clogged duct. Anyway, Corvidia is talking to herself in her bassinet, so I'm gonna go back to her, but I think I might need to strap on my carrier and do some cleaning while baby wearing her. Also, while I'm taking on the laundry, I should probably take out the diaper trash. This is another one of dad's jobs, huh? This thing stinks, girl, you be pooping. Yeah. Baby poop is so weird because it doesn't smell like poop. It smells like breast milk that's been like left out. Okay, I'm gonna wear you. Honestly, she enjoys the cloth wrap so much more than she likes the Artipop, which is a huge bummer, but she'll grow into the Artipop and we can use it more later. It was a gift from my mom, which is a very sweet and generous gift. So that's why I'm like, oh, you don't even like it. Great. I think it's just too wide of a spread for her little legs right now. She's short like her mommy. Okay, let's clean. <laughs> It's nice to give the baby a couple forehead kisses, Rue. <laughs> I just completed a lot of cleaning downstairs and that was seriously one of the most successful baby wearing times for me, just in terms of like being able to get a lot done. She was really chill while I was just vacuuming and wiping down the counters and stuff. And I switched the laundry from the washer to the dryer and I came up and fed her and we've been chilling up here ever since. While well, I think about what the heck I'm gonna have for dinner, I food prepped some squash, but then I realized that I ate all of the quinoa before Finley went out of town and I never prepped any beans or anything as a protein, so I literally just have like three Tupperwares full of roasted squash. So I'm gonna have to accompany that with something, perhaps a pasta or a rice, but we'll figure it out. And um, she just took a big nap, but her bath time and bedtime routine starts in like a half hour, so she'll be prepared for it either way. Okay, just wanted to check in. We never ended up leaving the house today, but honestly, I'm happy that we didn't because I needed to get some stuff done here. I needed to do my work and upload my vlog and then also just get some cleaning done. And I still have some cleaning to do once she goes to sleep, just because there were some things that I needed to like crawl to reach that she was uh, kind of in the way. <laughs> With just baby wearing her, it wasn't easy to access certain things. Okay, I put some quinoa on while I was doing Corvidia's nighttime routine. And I'm also going to heat up, this is a sad dinner, but I'm going to heat up a cheese stick broken into pieces with a bunch of squash and then mix in the quinoa. And that's dinner tonight, honey. Okay, it's the middle of the night, so forgive the red light as well as the sound of my AC and our white noise machine. But I just wanted to say that I just had one of those moments where if Finley was here, I would have been like, I need help. I'm tapped out, you know? But because it's just me, I had nobody to tell that to. So I'm telling you instead. So picture this, the baby has gone down to sleep. She's been asleep for almost three hours at this point. And I'm like, okay, I have to wake her up soon to do a dream feed before I go to sleep, which is what I normally do. If it's not what you normally do, that's totally fine. It's just what me and my lactation consultant discussed. Anyway, I'm getting ready for that. But first I'm like, oh, I have to bag the milk in my catch cups and freeze it. And so I go downstairs to do that, but then I'm like, I left some dirty laundry on the stairs from when I took her out of her clothes and had rags from cleaning the kitchen earlier. And I needed to bring those up here. So I'm going down the stairs, I see those and I make a mental note. Okay, I'm gonna get those on the way back up. I have my catch cups, I'm going downstairs. When I'm also going downstairs, I'm like, I need to bring up the nose sucker because I cleaned it and I need to grab that on my way down. And then I also make a mental note, oh, when I took the garbage out earlier for the diapers, I never brought another trash bag up. And so I need to bring another trash bag up. And I also need to let the dogs out before bed so that they can go to the bathroom and I need to refill my water bottle. 
she wakes up while I'm doing that, starts crying upstairs, and I'm like, oh my god, it's time for her feed. She's on her own schedule, you know? And then the dogs are outside, and I'm like, oh my god, I need to get the dogs back inside. And then also I forget like literally everything <laughs> that I was supposed to bring up or take down, vice versa, you know, all of the things. And then I come back up here and I changed her and then I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I needed a trash bag. And then I go downstairs to get the trash bag with her, bouncing her, she's not having it. Rue also needs me to carry her up the stairs, so she's sitting at the bottom of the stairs barking to be airlifted. And I have the baby on one hand trying to grab a trash bag, trying to grab the laundry. It's one of those things where you're just like, hey, if only I had eight arms, that would be incredible. I really admire the octopus. Anyway, just wanted to give you a little dose of reality tonight. Needless to say, I miss my husband. And I don't know how y'all are doing this shit alone. Du Marabosure. Future me cropped this from like, tits up. Good morning, good morning, y'all. It was, I guess, a decent night of sleep for us. Um, what was so weird was that Corvidia, I think I told you guys this last night. Yeah, I definitely did, but like, she woke up before her dream feed, which is the opposite of what a dream feed is. When you dream feed your baby, they're basically still asleep. But um, she woke up and was like crying to be fed around like 11, 50, 12 ish. So that was strange. Then she woke up again around, well, I guess I could probably check my app. I use baby tracker by the way, and track her feeds on there just so that I know when was the last time that she fed. She woke up at 3.45 and then again at 7.30 and we've been up since 7.30 and now it's like 9.40. My hair needs a shower by the way, but I'm going on a hike today. So I'm gonna shower after said hike. We are going on a mushroom walk today with our local mycological society, which is awesome. It's basically just a mycology group. And we go out into the woods and just kind of leisurely stroll. It's not even really a hike. Like we go on hiking trails, but everybody just kind of like meanders off into the woods. And then they give us like a little brown paper bag and we collect all of our mushrooms or you can bring your own foraging bag or basket or whatever in your own little hand lens as well, which is like a little lens that goes around your neck and you can like see the gills better for identifying or, you know, the pores at the bottom and all that kind of stuff. And then the people who run it, Bethany and Sam, they're so knowledgeable. So like if you hang and kind of meander around the woods with them, one of them will be able to tell you probably what that mushroom is. But I say probably because mushrooms are so incredible. They are constantly changing. They're like one of the most intelligent species in the world. And so when you go out into the woods and you're looking for more, there will literally be times where you're like finding a mushroom for the first time that has never been identified in literature. So you're like, oh, great. Just found a new fun thing. So today we're going with, I believe his name is Noah Siegel, an expert mycologist and co-author of Mushrooms of the Redwood Coast and Mushrooms of Cascadia. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go walk in the woods with him today and learn about some different shrooms. And I'm trying to figure out what to put her in. I just changed her diaper, but I'm like, if it's gonna be almost 80 and I'm gonna be baby wearing you, maybe we do another one of your little tank top rompers. Also, when I woke up this morning, she was in her bassinet, so I just power unloaded the dishwasher. <laughs> You are cute. She's being funny and talkative. But last night when she went to sleep, I didn't end up doing a lot more of my cleaning. Instead, I just finished The United States of Terra, which is such a fantastic show. I do want to give the disclaimer though, that if you actually have DID or know somebody with DID, this show is obviously incredibly uh, over the top. And it's kind of like a caricature of the disease in a way, but also sheds light on the disease. So it's a complex show in a lot of ways. It's also very old, so sometimes I say jokes that are just like not for the times, you know what I mean? But oh my god, Brie Larson in the show, come on. And aside from the cast, I mean the storyline's fantastic and the acting is really, really top tier. So I watched it for the first time probably in like 2014 or 15, honestly, so long ago. And it's been like almost 10 years. And I don't remember if I ever actually finished the show, like all three seasons. So I finished it last night. And honestly, if you guys have seen the show, I really hate the final altar. They just really creep me out. And so last night when I was going to sleep, I was really just like on edge, but the show resolved well and I just love it. Also, they have random guest features that are so fantastic too. Like tell me why they got Viola Davis. Come on. I mean, again, you can't beat the cast. Anyway, 
we're gonna go on our walk today and I'm gonna get you dressed. Okay, I have her favorite passy. I have my carrier, a burp cloth. I have our favorite blankies from Little Unicorn. I use these in the car when I get in the backseat to nurse her and I prop her up like with this. I have bug spray, my sunglasses, hand sanitizer. This is a what's in my diaper bag. <laughs> That's very rushed because I have to leave in three minutes. I have four diapers, which should hopefully be enough, our changing pad that comes with this backpack. This is the product of the North backpack. It was like sustainably made and we love it. We also have a wet dry diaper bag for dirty diapers to go in there. I also have gluten-free and vegan cookies for me and my friend to snack on if we need them. I also always keep these in here, her little ear protection. I have this app on my phone. I believe it's called Nioish, N-I-O-S-H. And it analyzes the noise around you to see how many like decibels it's hitting. And if it's over a certain amount, I put her little ear protection on. I also have my wallet, keys, and phone. While my phone's behind us, I'm gonna bring my vlog camera. I have this, I never really use it though, but it's like a portable sound machine if she's like really not <laughs> doing well. And I just charged that up. So I'd say we're ready to go, but I do need some granola on the go. her in the parking lot within the first 20 minutes of arriving here before we walked onto the trail. So there are some people already out there getting after it in the forest. There's probably like 25 people here, honestly, huge group compared to last time. I think last time there was like eight. So really a lot of folks. You certainly don't see, normally don't see this many. But you know, as you walk along, you'll often see the blue wood in the woods. It's from this fungus. Okay, we just got back home. And I cleaned out the car really quickly because I needed to, you know, throw away the diapers anyways in the wet dry bag. Also, big exciting news. We found this iPod in our renovation process. It was crazy. It was just like at the top of a ceiling beam. And so I ordered an old charger and corded headphones to be able to listen to it. So I'm gonna take this up and feed her and also check in on the music on that. If it turns on, I'll let you know. I also got some other things in the mail. I got a thing of diapers. We use the Honest diapers and I honestly love them, but I'm going to be transitioning to cloth diapers in the fall. That's the plan at least. <laughs> and obviously we'll like still use some disposables every now and again when we're like traveling or something or just to have on hand but yeah i got more of these in the panda and the moo print but what a day truly what a day i love the mushroom group i highly recommend wherever you live looking for a mycological society facebook group wherever you are um i just happened to see the lady who started this group put on like the brattleboro page like hey i'm starting a mushroom group, you can come join it here. And I was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. And that was my second walk. And it was so much freaking fun. And basically the structure of the walk is not really like even hiking. It's just kind of like a foraging kind of meander through the woods. And because we had Noah Siegel there today, 
we were just kind of like all clustered around him and then he would stop, find something, pick it up and then just talk about it. I got a couple of videos that I'll insert into this if you're curious, him just talking about various things that he found. He was super knowledgeable and kind and it was great. And I made a couple new friends, which was fun. So I, on the last walk, was the only person there with a baby. But then on this walk, there was another mom in the group and I saw her baby and I was like, that baby looks like the exact same size as Corvidia. And then before I went onto the walk, like I said, I had to feed her in the back seat. So I was like nursing her and stuff. And then uh, they take, <laughs> she's goo goo ga over here. They take it so slow on the walk that we knew that we'd be able to catch up to them. And I was just like talking to my friend and catching up and whatnot. And then we caught up to the group. And when we found them, the other mom was nursing her baby, just like sitting on a log. And I was like, oh, I'm feeling a lot of camaraderie right now, you know? And then after she was done, she caught up to the group and I was talking to her about her baby. And she was like, yeah, my baby's three months old as well. She was born on May 22nd. And I was like, my baby was born on May 23rd. <laughs> and so then we were talking about that. And then I met her husband and the uncle to her kids as well. Her husband's brother was on the walk as well. And they were all so cool. So we exchanged information and I told her, I was like, maybe when they're bigger, they can play at the, bless you, playground together. And she told me about like a cool library near her and we're not that far from each other. And honestly, Facebook groups like this, I would say are such an ideal way to make friends in a new area because it's like, obviously the people going on the mushroom walk are gonna be similar people that I would wanna hang out with for the most part, you know what I mean? Mushrooms are for everybody. It doesn't matter, you know, what you are into. Other people could be into, you know, foraging mushrooms and have a completely different lifestyle than I do. But for the most part, people are pretty chill and cool. Are you wanting to go upstairs? Yeah, okay, we're gonna go upstairs and turn on the AC and enjoy ourselves up there. I think actually before we go upstairs, I'm gonna make like a watermelon mint refresher for myself because I'm feeling a little parched and I also will put a little sea salt in there for the electrolytes. Oh, and I have cucumber. I'll put that in there too. Okay, I threw some frozen watermelon in there, about like a cup of water, a handful of mint from the garden and like half a cucumber. We're gonna blend that bad boy up. This looks really gross, but it's incredibly good by the way. Every sip I take, I'm like, Find you. My love can fly. The next morning. Hi, Mrs. Bashful. Good morning, Corvidia. Hi, Ru. This is Mrs. Kisses, and that's Mrs. Bashful. How long has this been here? Shit. Good morning. Sorry for my white noise machine and the AC again. Honestly, I just like to have them on, not just for the baby, but also for myself. They're really wonderful. Looks like Rue's awake. She's just kind of pitter-pattering around on the floor, ready for me to let her out, but I'm currently breastfeeding. So it looks like she's finding a spot to sunbathe in on the floor while she waits. I would like to say that I had a bit of a rough night, loves. Honestly, I think that Corvidia might be going through some kind of a sleep regression or something because she used to be way better at sleeping than she has been while I've been filming, which is interesting. And she did just turn three months and I don't know if there's a regression around three months. I feel like there might be. Either way, it's been a second since I filmed last because my mom actually has been doing this thing where she reads to Corvidia on FaceTime, which is really sweet and lovely. And I had actually sent her a book called Wherever You Go, My Love Will Find You by Nancy Tillman. Shout out to the person who sent the Nancy Tillman books to my PO box because we love On the Night You Were Born and we love Wherever You Go, My Love Will Find You. And most of the time when my mom says bye to Corvidia on FaceTime, she'll ask her if she can put a kiss in her hand for later. And so I just thought it would be cute to send her the book because it's kind of like, you know, holding on to the kiss for later, wherever you are, you can find the kiss and, you know, hold it close to you and know that Maymay is there. That's her grandma name, Maymay. And then I was like, oh my God, she would love that book. So my mom's about to turn 61 soon. So for her birthday, I sent her the book off of thrift books. And then yesterday she read it to her on FaceTime and it's always so cute. I just set her up in her bassinet and then I'll like put the phone in there 
there horizontal so she can look okay just be patient rue so she can look at my mom and while she's set up in there and distracted and getting a book read to her i can do stuff so i was doing the laundry and that was nice but i wasn't able to finish it then because the book's kind of short so i wasn't able to like put everything away i still have some clothes on my rocking chair over there that i need to put away anyway after that things kind of went downhill <laughs> Like it was really pleasant on FaceTime and I actually caught up with my mom for a little bit after that too But then once like 6 30 or 7 rolled around I was noticing that she was ready for a nap But her bedtime routine normally starts around 8 So I was like do I want her to sleep right now? I guess she could take like a quick nap So I tried to put her down for a nap She was fighting sleep but she was obviously tired and getting a little cranky So I was like okay if you don't want to sleep maybe we can just go outside Babies love the outdoors Doors. If you have a fussy baby, take them outside and see if they stop crying. That's like one of the number one tips that I was suggested when I first had my baby. And also my lactation consultant said, if you have a really fussy baby and then you go outside and they're still crying, they're hungry. And so when I took her outside, she stopped crying. And so I was like, okay, she's just chilling out here. And I made myself some dinner and we ate on the porch and hung out with the dogs. And that was really nice because she was just chilling, right? And then after that, she was not chilling anymore. <laughs> then from like 7.30 to 7.45, I was just up here trying to console her. I was bouncing on my birth ball. I was rocking in the rocking chair. I was dancing and swaying around the room and bouncing her and playing the happy song if you know you know oh we love that song by imogen heap i feel like it will definitely be on my spotify wrapped but yeah she was basically not having it and then at 7 45 i was like okay this is a little early to start bath time but i'm just gonna start it early because she's clearly upset and ready to wind down and she's tired and so then we did that and we did kind of like a more elongated bath time last night anyway long story short i think i finally got her down around like nine because even though she was really tired she was still like fighting sleep and then once she went to bed i took a bath to relax and i tried to film a vlog clip to update you in there but my camera died and i took it as a sign to just friggin relax for the rest of the evening and so i did and it was lovely and then i went to bed and i kind of had a headache last night too which was really unfortunate so this is all just to say why i was not updating you in real time it's not all ribbons and roses all the time honey let's get the nightly report from my baby tracker i feel like she only woke up once but she stayed awake really weirdly enough yeah she was awake from 2 to 3 30. she nursed at 2 at 2 30 and at 3. and it was so weird because she never wakes up in the middle of the night and acts like it's morning i mean she hasn't done that since she was like very tiny because newborns have no concept of what time it is but i was so confused because normally if I nurse her in the middle of the night she's so drowsy she'll just immediately fall back asleep but that was not the case last night hence why I fed her three times <laughs> and I think she was just like hungry and just wanting to hang out really how long has this been here shit anyway I didn't feed her until two because she was fighting sleep for so long that once she actually fell asleep at around like nine ish I did not want to wake her up for her dream feed around 11 or 12 I was like you can wake me up when you're ready to eat honey and she did so anyway that's my nightly report <laughs> i said something about a headache and the headache is still here but i took some acetaminophen so hopefully it goes away this has been a long clip I'm gonna take out the old recycling let the doggies out also this is a random update but last night when core video went to sleep i came downstairs after the bath and i did this little setup on our main dining table here so we could have like a water pitcher for just so we don't have to get up from the table especially if we have company and stuff when we're eating and then i have my little piggy salt and pepper shakers that i antiqued and then these little napkin holders with like farm napkins in them i've had these for a while a bunny and a pig i honestly think i found those antiquing as well but i just thought that was super cute another kitchen update is that my mom does stuff like this she puts her like 
essentials for cooking, like the olive oil, salt and pepper. This is olive oil with garlic cloves in it and my spoon rest. She puts all of that on a Lazy Susan so she can like spin it around and grab things. And honestly, I've had this Lazy Susan just kind of like sitting in a box for a while. So I figured I would kind of elevate this space. I like it. It doesn't leave much room for chopping on this side, but that's why I have this to chop on. I need to replace the rechargeable batteries in my water pick today. So can't forget to do that. I also cleaned and reorganized this last night because I didn't get to that when I was cleaning the kitchen the other day with you guys. I basically just did like a big wipe down. And I think I have one tiny spot of coffee left. Y'all like this mug? I think Finley got this for his birthday. Every snack you make, every meal you bake, every bite you take, I'll be watching you. This pisses me off because there should be four things. It shouldn't be three. You know what I mean? That's not the song. The song has four. Seeing my sleep stages that my watch tracked in the middle of the night is always very humbling. <laughs> the amount of wake-ups. I just vacuumed the bedroom and the staircase and I didn't show it on vlog because I was in my underwear. But then I said, hey, just put on a robe, you know? And now I'm stripping the bed just to wash and change the sheets because we got baby spit up on the sheets. Yeah, that's okay. Spit happens. I also wanted to strip the bed anyway because I had my duvet cover on when it was kind of cooler these past few days, but now it's warming up again. So I'm gonna change it back to our little quilt and then just put, I think, the duvet at the end of the bed. Also, these sheets that we have, I believe are per cal, if that's how you pronounce that. And I wanna put our linen ones back on because they're my fave. These parachute linen ones in fog. Ugh, love them. All right, total success on the bed front. Got the other sheets in the wash. I'm honestly gonna cozy back up in here because Corvidia started to yawn again. And if she's tired, I'm taking a nap too. Oh, I have some sort of rat kind of walking behind me on the couch. That thing is huge. What the hell? Well, folks, we migrated from the bedroom to the living room, which is unfortunate because I just cleaned the entire bedroom and it was so nice up there. But Corvidia and I were sitting in bed. I was feeding her and the fire slash CO2 alarm started going off right above me. And I was so freaked out because I had this headache, right? That I told you guys about and it wasn't going away. It didn't go away with acetaminophen. So I was like, oh my God, is this CO2? So we ran out of the house and I got her all secured on the porch with the dogs. It's not sunny out today. So she was just chilling, bouncing in her little chair. And then I ran back upstairs and I disabled it and I took it off because inside of our CO2 slash smoke alarm, it has instructions in it on like what means what. And so it said four four beeps for CO2, three for fire, and it was doing three. So I was like, oh, I think that my humidifier is triggering this. And I Googled it and humidifiers, basically smoke alarms can't tell the difference between what particles are in the air. They just sense heavy air. And so it just thought that it was smoke when it was humidity. But either way, I got freaked out enough to move downstairs to the living room. And once I was moving all of our stuff down here and her down here, I was like, I'm just gonna air out that room. Literally every single door and window is open that has a screen on it. And I'm just kind of, yeah, airing out the house if it's too humid or something, cause that was really annoying. And everybody, especially Rue, got really freaked out once she heard the beeping. I also got scared enough that I called Finley and he's on a boat on a lake in North Carolina with the bachelor party. Cause today is their last like final hours, I think with the pontoon boat they rented, he's been having an amazing time. And so I didn't want to call him, but I was freaked out. And he like looked up a bunch of stuff and sent it to me and was like, maybe the battery's low. And I was like, no, if the battery was low, it would be like, beep, you know, like the annoying beeping that you can sometimes hear in people's moving vlogs when they first move into a place because the alarm batteries haven't been changed in the new house in a while. Do you guys notice that that correlates? Anyway, he was helpful. And so were all the boys on the boat. He was like, do you guys know what the beeps mean <laughs> on a CO2 smoke alarm? And I just heard like various men in the background being like, um, I think it depends on the model. <laughs> 
Oh god, I was this close to calling my local fire department instead, uh, and I would have if it was CO2, but I'm just airing out the room from the humidity and I turned off my AC unit as well. And honestly, I should probably just clean the filter on our AC unit today too. And I moved my husband pillow down here to the living room, which honestly, I feel like it would be better as a couch thing rather than in my bed because it takes up a lot of space in the bed. And we have a California king. It's ridiculous. I barely use this in the bed anymore. I did like immediately postpartum like for the first month or so when I was feeding her But now I just prop up a couple of willy-nilly pillows, you know, what are you doing over there? Larry You haven't really been in the vlog much, huh, honey? This used to be in our bedroom in Oregon and it was in like the corner and every single night Larry would sneak out of the bed and go and sleep right here. So it is his favorite place He thinks it's his throne and bed and it is. Anyway, I have a very happy baby who's kicking and looking at me. And I'm probably just going to listen to this iPod. I was trying to get it to be charged all night and I was having a lot of problems with it and the buttons weren't working and I ended up just plugging it into my laptop and I could see the library on there. Unreal amount of country music on this thing. Like truly an insane amount of country. It's primary, I would say it's 90% country. And then there's also like Kelly Clarkson and like Sublime and Whitney Houston and some other random artists. And then it's one of the early iPods where you could download videos onto it. So there's also two seasons of Breaking Bad on there. Incredible. Shout out to Pierre. I don't know who the hell Pierre is because that was not the name of the previous owner of this home. That was not the name of his son either. And I'm like, Okay, who's Pierre? It's been a real treat. So I brought it down so that I could listen to music down here. Balance her in her chair, hopefully, until she falls asleep. She was yawning, like the last clip that I told you guys about, and I thought she was tired, and she was kind of like, uh, falling asleep, and then the smoke alarm went off. So I was like, this is just fantastic. So good for my headache. <laughs> I was hoping to just take a nap with her, but it doesn't really seem to be happening that way. But I'm really happy I cleaned today. I'm also gonna check on my to-do list and see what I did not get done this weekend. I feel like I got a lot done and I especially did a lot of like social stuff, which I'm proud of. And I'm just proud of like surviving and doing well <laughs> alone. But I still need to do some brand deal work. I need to write out a script. It's Sunday when I'm filming this, so I can do it late tonight and have it in for the brand on Monday. I also need to clean the old ceiling fan that we replaced in the kitchen with one with lights and the old one had no lights and it was really pretty gorgeous fan and we thought about selling it but then Finley was like I'm sure we will need another ceiling fan at some point for like some room in here, you know? So I need to clean it so we can just store it downstairs. I'm still doing the laundry. I need to replace the batteries on my water pick, like I was saying, but I don't know where our rechargeable battery thing is. Also, because we had company two weeks ago, we have uh, an air mattress and a mattress on the floor in the wing because we had people stay here for the first time. Normally, they just stay at hotels, but it was our friends rather than family and we were like mm, you guys can sleep here if you want we got some we got some mattresses and some things and I never put those beds away since I laid them on the floor so I have to do that I have to reschedule a meeting with my finance guy I need to pick up alterations holy shit they've been there for way too long <laughs> I got like actually I think in a vlog I dropped off those alterations it's not those it's not those ones I went back and I brought him more I also need to drop off donations at the village closet which is like a baby and kind of parent related it's basically like pregnancy and maternity things um, that you can donate. And I have a ton of like unopened things that we just never used for Corvidia and we're not going to use and some clothes as well. So I need to take those to the Winston Prouty campus, which is, that's where it is if you're local, but they have really weird hours. <laughs> Bless you. I think they're only open on Wednesdays and Saturdays and it's for like maybe two hours. And then I also have donations to drop off at the thrift store, but the thrift store is closed today. And also the dump is closed. It's Sunday, so everything's closed, but I was going to take my compost that's in the freezer to the dump because I still don't have a compost system here because this is the main thing, is that we have black bears, the Vermont black bear, 
she is present, she has visited, and that's why we have the game camera down there. And actually, I don't know if the bear's a she, I'm just saying, she, her. <laughs> so that's terrifying, and I really don't want, even though black bears are friendly, I don't want them around my property and my dogs and my baby. So I really don't wanna put out a compost system that would attract bears. And we were open air composting in Oregon, but we absolutely cannot do that here. One of our neighbors showed us a security camera video from his front porch where a bear literally walked up his front steps and was just like chilling on his porch. So um, cancel that. <laughs> Don't want that to happen. So I've been looking on like the Vermont government website because they have safety tips for safe composting. And I just need to like research it more. They basically suggest like an, a closed barrel that you can turn and stuff and adding I think it's like 70% more brown matter like you know leaves and cardboard and those types of things than food waste so we could try to do that as well because that's supposed to like break down the odors of the foods obviously not composting like meat or bones and stuff like that anyway I'm on a tangent but I do need to research a compost system I also need to drop off some chairs to get recaned and if you're not familiar with chair caning I'll put like a photo on the screen of what caned chairs look like. And I have these two chairs that I've been meaning to get caned pretty much since we moved here. They've just been chilling in the kitchen and I wanna put them at like this little, you know the table that was in our kitchen, the tiny one, before we got the new kitchen island tool bench thing? That little two-seater table, I wanna make into a game table for like two-on-two -two board and card games and like chess and backgammon and stuff like that for me and Finley. And I wanna put it right here and those, recaned chairs will accompany that little table. Anyway, I need to do that, but also chair caning place closed. And then I need to buy new books. And I have a membership to a local bookstore where I get like 20% off for being a member. And I literally have never used it. <laughs> went into the bookstore like around the holidays and they convinced me to buy a membership and I was like okay I'll do it and not once in the almost nine months since then have I used that discount and I need to go and buy new books because I'm in an era with reading right now where I'm reading mainly like feminist texts as well as like trauma-informed books just because I feel healed enough in my own journey that I can now like read about things and not get triggered, if that makes sense. And so I read Girlhood by Melissa Favos, incredible book, highly recommend. And I also want to get Your Body Keeps the Score or The Body Keeps the Score, I can't remember, but that one's like a heavy hitter, have never read it. And I also wanted to get one other one. You talking to me? Okay, I'll get off the vlog. Anyway, that's my to-do list, it's bodacious. Several song-filled hours later. Okay, not to be dramatic, but finding this has been one of the best things that's ever happened in my life. Like, I don't think there's many people in the world who would have appreciated the gift of finding this more than me. <laughs> I'm just like truly being catapulted back. When I said it was 90% country music, I actually lied. I'd say it's about maybe 60% country music. And then the other songs are like Creed, or Akon, or Kesha, Rihanna, High School Musical. I'm like, what's happening right now? And then this was really the cherry on top, is that there was the entire first album from Sammy Adams on here. And I was obsessed with Sammy Adams when I was like in middle school. This was like pre-Mac Miller obsession for me because he was a white boy rapper and he was so hot to me. And I just remember like being so in love with him and I completely forgot about him. I don't think I've thought about Sammy Adams since I was in middle school. And then he came up on my shuffle and I was like, holy shit, this is, this is the best day of my life. And so now I'm listening to It's Five O'Clock Somewhere. Let's see what's after this. Next to You by Buck Cherry. I mean, it just doesn't get better than this. Like, I seriously want to cry tears of joy. Also, I know my bangs are insane. Just kind of black it out. <laughs> I'm giving curtain. <laughs> I wish. One nap later. Okay, good morning again, folks. Wow. I had a lovely nap. So lovely that my headache went away. So that means it was simply a sleep deprivation nation headache. And we slept from probably like 1.30ish until like 3. Pretty good nap if you ask me. And now I'm having a little apple and PB and feeding her. And then we're gonna go about the rest of our day. But I really needed that. 
and I'm happy that she was able to sleep too. We're doing our high contrast cards. M is for Moose or Ma, Mommy, Ooh, or Megan. You like that one? Well, I was gonna make lactation cookies, the ones that I made in my last vlog. So I wasn't gonna show you the process, but I was just gonna show you the final product. And then I realized I'm out of eggs because I made egg cups with an entire carton of eggs. I could go get eggs right now if I wanted to, but instead I just made a smoothie and we're hanging out on the porch, all of us. What are you up to, dogs? Just hanging out, just waiting for Da to get home. He'd fallen silent in the past day. Not rude, but quiet and vague, as if he were rebuilding the wall between them. Okay, hi guys, it's bath time again. And I don't know the last time that I spoke to you, honestly, I feel like it was when I was out on the porch, but um, we actually just got off the phone with my bestie Maddie and her daughter Olive, who she had two weeks before Corvidia, which was so awesome. And in my like pregnancy announcement video, that was the people we were talking to, Maddie and Adam, who announced their pregnancy to us. When we announced ours to them, which was truly, Honestly, I think it was one of my favorite moments of my life and definitely one of my favorite moments of 2023. And now we're like raising our daughters at the same time and just, you know, going through pretty much the same stuff around the same timeline. So we were really just talking about our girls like for most of the call and just kind of catching up on life and what it looks like for them where they are because they're in good old Indiana, honey. We met them when we were in Oregon though. But yeah, so I miss them every freaking day of my life and I talk to Maddie all the time, but it had been a while since we FaceTimed. Literally, we had not FaceTimed since that call when we announced our pregnancies to each other. We just text all the time. So it was really nice to catch up with them and I just had a totally wicked time talking to them. And we started our call probably around like 6.45 or 7. And I knew that Corvideo would start to get a little bit tired on the phone. And she started to get a little bit antsy. So I was bouncing her in her chair probably around like 7.45 and she fell asleep until 8. So we're having her bath time now and I had to wake her up for it, which I know some people would be like, just let the baby sleep. But I'm just trying to keep her on her schedule because she is gonna have to eat anyway. And it has been a while since she last fed, since we were um, on that phone call. And then she'll fall asleep and we'll have to leave the house around like 10, 15 to go and pick up Da from the airport. It's been a good weekend. I feel like I've done a lot of just like social things and I'm happy that I also cleaned the kitchen because I've been kind of putting that off for a while. And even if I didn't get everything on my to-do list done, I can just do those things when Finley gets back and is watching her and I can go and do like six things on my to-do list all at once in town or something. And honestly, this vlog's already getting really long, but I'm not going to end it off here because I want to vlog the process of going to the airport and waking her up to transfer her to her car seat and stuff like that and seeing how it goes because I need an emotional support animal that is my camera with me for this journey. <laughs> okay, see you after bedtime. Okay, I did it. I successfully transferred her from sleep to her car seat and me and the dogs are heading down to the airport now. Sorry for the whispering. I really don't want to wake her up. It was the perfect execution, truly. I pulled the car she was still asleep and I had the monitor to check on her and she didn't wake up at all and then I loaded the dogs in and all my stuff in and then I went back in for her and I got her all secured in there while she was still asleep which is a feat and now we're gonna go get down. I got my baby back, baby back, baby back. She's really... <laughs>